How have you been today? I've been good. Hope you have. Yeah, I super so, appreciate that you're willing to figure out what the landscape of sharing art looks like and doing this with me. This is so exciting. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank um, you for having me. I'm excited to do this and just uh, grateful that people are interested. So <laughs> we've had a couple of phone calls today for folks that may not be able to attend. They were very interested in participating and wanted to know if it was going to be recorded. So I thought that was really exciting. Oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Wonderful. We've yes. had a lot of folks come in and um, actually we had a folk today who came in and he said, wow, this is so beautiful. And hearing him articulate some of the things that he was noticing in the artwork was so cool. Oh, I love that. I love to hear people tell me what they see and notice about the art. So that's great. <laughs> I'm glad um, to hear that. See what time are we at? <gasps> We're almost there. Okay. <laughs> um, cool. Let's see who's in it. Way cool. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I do this because sometimes I'm a bit scattered, <laughs> and sometimes we be inaccurate. Most of the time I'm a bit scattered, so notes help me keep anchored. Um, some of the things that I wanted to share, because I have some questions for you personally about the work, having seen your work. Um, so I just want to start by saying hi, I'm Rory. I'm the visual arts director here at Alamance Arts. Um, I'm thrilled to be here with Julia and everyone who's decided to share and spend their time with us. Thank you. Um, before we dive in, there's a few housekeeping items I'd like to address. If you have any questions for the artist, feel free to drop them in the Q&A. We'll be able to speak them out loud to Julia and give Julia a chance to respond to them. Um, I would also like to break down the flow of the event. We're going to invite Julia to speak a little bit about their work, their creative process, um, what's that like, and then uh, we'll take a little tour of the gallery space, although I do want to also include that there's absolutely nothing like seeing the artwork in person. True. And please do come by. Um, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Alamance Arts, Alamance Arts' mission is to commitment to shaping the cultural identity of Alamance County by making art accessible. I think being gallery space and doing these things virtually helps make that accessible. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce Julia. Um, would you like to kick off by sharing some of your artwork or would you mind if I drop in a bio about you? Um, why don't you um, go ahead and Read, are you going to read the bio, did you say? Sorry. Yeah. Okay, yeah, go, you want to do that, and then we'll talk a little bit, and then we can look at the art, or yeah. whatever whatever order you want to do. <laughs> I love that. We're shaping this together as we do it. Thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> um, so what we have about you is that you synchronize using color and brush strokes to capture the essence of a moment and invoke emotion. I can personally attest to that, seeing the work especially this particular show. Um, the oil paintings have been called extravagantly beautiful, spiritual, and inspiring. Again, I echo all of those sentiments. Oh, thank you. Um, you mentioned that you grew up in St. Simmons Island and still a deep appreciation for nature, light, and the wetlands. I can see that resonate in some of the landscapes that you paint. I think those are beautiful. Um, her pieces are featured in private and corporate collections across the US, including Town Bank, George State University College of Law, and her work has appeared in art pop billboards. I always get those confused, as well as galleries. And so that's what we have on you. Um, okay. Come on. All right, great. Okay, well, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. I live in Concord, North Carolina, just north of Charlotte. Um, so about an hour and 15 minutes or so from where you are, Rory. And um, I have all, always drawn and loved art, but I didn't start painting till uh, 2014. So I've been painting, what is that, seven years, about seven and a half years. So um, I, I just fell in love with oil paint and I love it. Now, not all of the paintings are oil paintings. Most of them are, but then there's some mixed media, of course, uh, watercolor and charcoal and, um, some India ink on the on one of the um, one of the pieces, but 
Um, mostly I do oil painting and mostly landscape, but I love figure work. And I was so thrilled, Rory, when you asked me to do this show um, because I haven't had a show about my figure work before. So, um, and I also want to say that I just love the way that you um, collaborated everything together and you, you, um, I'm sorry, I can't think of the word I'm trying to think of, but anyway, the way you pulled together the particular florals and landscapes with the figure work, I just think they complement each other really well and uh, you did a great job. So thank you so much. Um, so for those of you that haven't seen the show, which is probably most of you, um, I, I, uh, the, sorry, the show is composed of 19 female figures, two males, five florals, and three landscapes. And as I said, they're, um, mostly, well, there's some oils, mostly oils, but mixed media as well. And most of these works were done between 2017 and 2019. So um, just to give y'all a little history on that. And um, um, let's see, portraiture is not my aim. I don't, I'm not aiming for realistic portraiture. I'm more about um, like kind of a contemporary impressionist or expressionist. And I try to just capture the impression and uh, a feeling and, you know, very gestural. So, um, and um, I don't know, I just, I love the female figure particularly. As I said, there's a couple of male models in this exhibit, but I really love doing the females because I just feel like it's, it's our um, glory that we have such a sensuality and a beautiful form and figure about us. And I love the, the curves and <laughs> um, I just, I'm really, I, I took a figure class, which is where all of the, this art came out of, and uh, I just found it very exciting and fun to do the figure. So um, anyway, <laughs> um, would you like me to talk about the figure work more or do you, you want to go in a different direction? No, I think this is great. I super appreciate how collaborative you are in this process. And thank you also for the compliments, very heartwarming. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have a couple of questions. Yeah. And I love that you kind of segued into some of those already on your own, which is really cool. <laughs> so you said that you took a figure art class. Was that like, was there something that was going on that you were like, I must do this? Or were you just inspired and decided or saw it was awesome? Yeah. And why not? Thank you. That's a good question. And I had that in my notes, but I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so I was mostly interested in doing landscape, but I had a little bit of experience with the figure before in college. Well, let me back up. Like in, in high school, I, as I said, I'd always drawn in, in high school, the people that I drew were only from photographs. I didn't, don't remember doing any, any live. We had a model once or twice, but that's about it. And so then in college, um, I was not an art major. I was actually a journalism major, but I took as much art as I could on the side. And um, so that is where I really got introduced to figure drawing. So um, it was mostly charcoal and pastel. And I just really fell in love with it. And I really enjoyed the live models. So that was great. Um, and then fast forward, I, you know, I had a job and then got married, had children, and I was always doing something creative, but I, I wasn't necessarily, you know, drawing people or whatever. And um, so then I, I wanted to get back into art once all my kids, I have four daughters, by the way. And so they all started school. I got the last one into school and I said, I'm gonna, you know, really pursue art now. So I found um, a studio where I could learn oil painting because I I'd taken just a workshop here, workshop there in different mediums and just kind of dabbled and tried pastel and, you know, clay and a lot of different things. But um, I just thought, you know, I think I'm really gonna enjoy the texture, the viscosity of the oil paint. And that, that was true. So um, I found a great studio and um, started the fundamentals class and then just kept taking. And so there I was encouraged to take the figure class to um, feed into my landscape work. Like one kind of, yeah, it, it, it's an interesting way to think about it, but um, thinking about the figure as a landscape. And then, you know, I guess it could work the other way too. But anyway, it, one informed the other. 
So I found that it was really true that it, it fed into my landscape work and helped me. And I, I just enjoyed the figure so much and remembered how I enjoyed that drawing class in college. So that is how I got there. <laughs> and so all of these works came out of that figure class, which of course, due to COVID, we haven't had in a couple of years, but, <laughs> or yeah. maybe not that long, a year and a half. Yeah. So. Wow, that is so cool. So then... I'm sorry, you froze, froze up. Can um, folks in encourage? Sorry, um, can you repeat it? The camera froze for a minute. <laughs> okay. Um, so I was, I was digesting and processing how you share the landscapes and figure work inform each other in both ways. Is there a painting or a piece of artwork that you can think about or share with us um, that you I really would, see that come to life? The, what was the last thing you said? Like, is there a particular piece of artwork that you created that you see that come to life in? Well, um, well the first, main one that comes to mind because I had a couple of artist friends that came to the studio as I was laying out all the work for this show and they were looking at all the pieces and we were talking about the big one on the board called Unashamed and how yeah. that kind of has the feel of a landscape so I will take everyone with me to go and see that piece <laughs> I love that you mentioned that <laughs> yeah it's a fun way to think about um, you know, as we said, how one informs the other. This is a really you know, beautiful Pardon? This is a really beautiful piece. Oh, thank you. But you know, I, actually, when you really think about it, all of our life experiences and our visual data and everything informs all of our art. So, you know, it's, everything is feeding into all the art we do as artists, I feel like. I love that you said that. Um, one of the other things that I was thinking about is, and you, you touched upon this a little bit, how long you've been creating art. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've always drawn and dabbled. And like I said, I, um, well, I, it was always pencil mainly and pen and ink. And then I started exploring different things. I had just graduated from college. And as I said, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have an art degree. So I just continued to take art classes at night <laughs> and at the community college. It was actually CPCC. I was in Charlotte. And so I just explored and I did woodworking, stained glass, ceramics, um, watercolor. But, I, you know, I just took like one of everything. <laughs> wow. So I didn't really go deep, but I went wide. And so that was fun. Um, and then I just, as I said, you know, I got married, had children, so I wasn't really producing, but I did other things. Like I painted a mural in our nursery and I did art with the kids and things like that. And then I was their elementary school art teacher for a couple of years. And actually that's really what drove me to painting. I, I had so much fun teaching the art history part that I was like, I got to start doing my own thing again, you know, and, and I really didn't know what my thing was. I just knew I had a drive to make art and I knew I loved art. And so, you know, looking at all the art history and showing the kids that I, I um, that made me more and more determined. And then also I was a docent at our local arts council here in Cabarrus County. So <laughs> we appreciate arts councils so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Being around all of the other art, the art council that you were just sitting at, um, and also your own involvement in all of these different mediums, how did you arrive at this one to be the one? Well, um, as I said, I, I just thought I would enjoy the texture of oil paint, the thickness of it, the viscosity of it, and the um, you know, I'm not one of those that blends everything and makes it absolutely flat and smooth. I like a lot of texture. And if you come to see the work in person, which as you said, <laughs> we highly recommend, um, you'll see that. And so, um, 
yeah, it was true. And, and I just fell in love with the oil painting. I love it. And I haven't really done any acrylic um, and I've done very little watercolor. So, uh, but I, I do enjoy combining drawing, you know, with oil painting. So either I'll sketch in my sketchbook or I'll sketch out kind of roughly my idea on the canvas before I start sometimes or um, do the mixed media pieces. And, you know, again, that's where the figure work class really had um, a satisfying effect for me because I could do a lot of drawing in there. We would warm up with charcoal and newsprint and then we would go to the, you know, whatever we were doing that day um, on whatever substrate. Sometimes we do boards, sometimes we do paper, sometimes we do canvas, you know, and we do more mixed media than I typically do with landscape, so. That's really cool. It sounds like that class gave you a really good breadth of um, challenge in your artistic practice and also creativity because they were different mediums, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah. Do you have a favorite painting? <laughs> show? Out, of, out of the show? Um, well, I, I have a couple of favorites, I guess. I really like purple hair, don't care, behind you. <laughs> All right, let's show folks that one. What yeah. parts of it um, do you really love about it? Um, I just, I don't know. I, I Well, I guess because I'm partial to purple is one reason. <laughs> and um, I just was really happy with the way, you know, it was just kind of a quick gestural study. And I was really happy with the way it turned out. I, I like the looseness of it. Um, I just like the feel of it. And I, I really enjoy um, painting on top of sh that amber shellac, which I do on paper and on wood. Yeah. I think this is really cool. Have you ever had different hair color? Have any of your daughters had different hair color? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> no, no, not unless you count gray. <laughs> oh, your no. hair is so beautiful. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you, Rory. Um, no, we, we're playing it pretty conservative with the hair color. <laughs> But I appreciate the people who do go a little wild with their color. <laughs> sure. Is there another piece, uh, another piece of artwork that you really like? Um, I like the one you started off in front of. I think I called that Extend. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really, really enjoy that one a lot too. Maybe it's the color or the um, composition all of the above, I guess, and it, it kind of has a loose quality to it as well. Now, that's one of the things that I find that's really interesting about this work is that there are some parts that are really defined and then there are some parts that are mm -hmm. more open. And I think those, you know, because they're in the same frame, the juxtaposition of both gives the mind a lot to work with and a lot to take in. And so mm -hmm. I find myself revisiting some of the paintings and getting really close and noticing, you know, a second or a third time. Wow, I didn't see that before. And so that's why I really love, like, I mean, there's a couple of special pieces in here to me, but that's my own personal taste that I'd love to share with everyone later. I love that. And I thank you so much. Everything you just said is like, you know, my dream compliment as an artist. <laughs> oh, so I really funny. appreciate that. And I'm glad I have it on video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that's really um, a great thing you touched on because that is one of the aims visually, you know, for the artist, or at least for myself, is I want you to revisit. I don't want you to look and be like, oh, okay, and be done and move on. I want you to revisit and discover new things the more you look and, you know, um, find it interesting and not look at it and think, oh, I know how she did that. You know, I want it kind of give some secret, some mystery to it. Yeah. Have you been able to share these artworks anywhere else? Um, not the figures. Um, let's see, except for one or two. I had like the, the male one called Repose in a show recently, but it was virtual. Um, okay. Yeah. Can we find and, that at the, uh, right here, here we go. Yeah, that was in the breath and the clay. And yeah, again, due to COVID this year, it was just online. But mm -hmm. I, I really, um, I like that piece a lot as well. 
I love the colors that you chose to use in here. And again, when we were talking about, um, you know, it's, there's detail and shape, but then there's all of these colors that one wouldn't assume would be human or, or human tone. And you mm -hmm. see them in here and they swirl together in this beautiful, like mysterious, I can see, but I can't see kind of way. And it keeps drawing me back to come and look at it. Wonderful, thank you. You're welcome. So um, I just have another question because these are, um, figures and they involve the body. Sometimes folks have pushed back on, well, this is, you know, not something that should be seen. Yeah. How do you, yeah. so as an artist, typically artists are innovators. They're creating things. They have maybe more broad perspective because that's how you pull creativity. That's how you create new things. Have you encountered pushback of this nature? And, and what did that look like? And what do you say in return? Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't had a whole lot of pushback because not a lot of people have seen the work, but, um, yeah, I do, I do realize that that is a very real thing in, in the world and, you know, um, I guess different, um, maybe some, a few shows, other shows and things like that, competitions, jury competitions and things, they'll specify no nudity or whatever so I realize that that is you know kind of a pushing the envelope thing in some respects at some places um and you know one of the questions you were you had on the email that we, we were talking about the show beforehand was um let's see um sorry <laughs> you said as an artist and a mother what are your thoughts on sharing this type of work with a younger audience and and I do believe you know that I would uh, like I didn't take my daughters to a show like this when they were really young I think there needs to be a level of maturity with the audience so I don't believe it's for everyone at every age but um you know they're older now and and they've seen this kind of work they obviously I was bringing it home from the studio and you know they kind of laugh sometimes or whatever but um I, I think that my, I was talking to my oldest daughter today. She's 22 and she brought up a good point. She said, mom, I think that um, it really is a great, great what you do because it helps young women to um, feel more confident about our body. Like us as daughters seeing you do this kind of work and not um, just paint models that meet the standard, you know, they were all kinds of body sizes and shapes and things. And, it's good for us to see that because then we're more accepting of our own bodies and realizing that all bodies are beautiful in their own way and et cetera, you know. So I thought that was a very good point. <laughs> and as, as I just said, you know, these were all different models, different poses. I wasn't directing the models. So somebody might be offended, you know, at some of the poses or whatever, but this was all you know, done in a class and for the purpose of um, painting the human figure, which I think is beautiful. Yeah, I love that they brought that up. That's really interesting because one of the things that I noticed in the work is that there were so many different shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. It felt really representative of what I see when I open up the front door that not everybody looks just in one particular homogenous shape. And so I thought right. that was really cool. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like actually my, one of my friends asked if one of the paintings, if the woman was pregnant, I was like, no, she just had a little bit of a belly, you know, and you know, she's beautiful. But, um, yeah. And, and as we know from art history, the standard has changed throughout time, you know, so. There's... So in case someone don't, doesn't know what you're talking about, would you mind elaborating on that? I love you brought that up. Um, well, and, and I'm sorry, the exact period escapes me now. I don't know if it was Baroque or Renaissance or what, but there, um, you know, there was at least one period of art history where the more cherubic, um, very <laughs> uh, voluptuous, very chubby even, you might say, women were, that was considered, you know, the way to be. And, and it, it exemplified wealth and, mm -hmm. um, a certain standing in society. I guess they were well fed. <laughs> yeah. 
I can see what you're talking about. Like when I think of this, what comes to mind for me is like the women on like lounges or fainting couches and how they were like larger bodied. And right. What I understand, it seems like those that was the ideal body type at that time, and even that's exactly. changed over a period of time. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. That's really interesting that you bring that up. Thank you so much. I feel like we're learning together. This is great. <laughs> well, and I'll I'll throw out another art history fact. Um, my daughter the oldest one that I was talking about, she said, you know what? Some of your work in the show reminds me of um, Manet's Olympia. So um, do you know which painting I'm talking about? I have a vague recollection of what it is, but I would love, just in case I might be wrong, also for the audience to also know, could you describe it? Yes, um, it's actually of a prostitute and she's reclining um, Mm -hmm. and I think, I don't think she's holding anything, but, and then there's a maid behind her and a cat, I believe in the corner, but um, yeah, but she's reclining. She's a full, you know, frontal nude reclining on a couch. So yeah. And I think it caused quite the stir in the art world when it was exhibited. (laughs) Oh, was it because of the nudity or because of the pose or both? What do you think? Um, I think both. I, I only, reviewed a little bit about it today so I don't know a great deal about it but and I won't pretend to but yeah I did read that both of those things were questioned. <laughs> this is super cool thank you for sharing that with us. Sure. Um, we did provide you with a couple of questions or anything on there that jumped out um, that um, you want to answer that you feel destined to? Um, let's see. Let me just Um, well, you said, what would you tell younger artists who are inspired by your work? Well, I would say, um, just pursue your passion. You know, like I said, I wasn't an art major and I think I just didn't really have the confidence to major in art back then, but I didn't give up. I, you know, realized that is my true love. And so I'm going to pursue it. And I did. And I'm, just thrilled that I get to go to a job that I love. I hate to even call it a job, but you know, um, a career, a calling that I just love every day and get to create. It's wonderful. So I would say, don't give up and, um, you know, just do whatever you can to enhance your visual vocabulary and find your voice. Ooh, I love that, the visual vocabulary. That's so cool. Um, Auntie <laughs> dropped a comment in the chat. I'm just going to read out loud to you. Sure. Um, let's see. And then I want to take a quick walk around the, the work so that folks can yeah. see something. Yeah. If anything that jumps out to you that you'd like to share about it, we'd love to hear that. Okay. So I love your work. Landscapes are easy to show here in the South. So glad you're giving us an opportunity to see some work we don't often see. Kay Andrews has said, a lovely artist, Julia. So enjoy seeing your work and hearing your story. Oh, thank you all so much. You've got big fans already. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm going to take us through to see the beginning of the show, what you would see as you come in the double doors. By no means is this a good representation of the work. Please come in and see it with your own eyeballs. Like I mentioned, I get to see it every day, and there is not a single time that I was like, I'm learning something new every time I look at the work. (laughs) Well, thank you. We need to go into um, the Rhine Gallery first. This is what we have to greet you at the door. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Julia hasn't seen the exhibition yet herself. So this is a new one for everyone, which is kind of cool. Right. Yeah. There's Pink Lady. (laughs) Yeah. I love the colors in here. And again, we were talking about how it's, um, you know, defined and then not defined. I think that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Just like moving away from it. Yeah. Oh, and another thing I could mention that I haven't is I use different tools. I like to mix it up with the brush, the palette knife, scrapers, you know, spatulas, whatever. I mean, I like to to vary the brush stroke, the marks that I'm making. I love that you mentioned that just as we come up to this one, there's some Mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Mark, sorry. You froze for a second. Um, Yeah, that is a shellac board piece of plywood actually and with house paint as the first layer just kind of an abstract base and then painted the model on top of that 
And then, you know, we, I used bubble wrap and <laughs> different things to get some pattern and impression on there. I think this is really cool. Let me move over to this one and see if there's anything you've got to share about either of these. Yeah, um, you know, I, I like that one too. I, I like the pose. She's kind of, we're kind of looking up at her. You're frozen, so I don't know if you're saying anything, sorry. <laughs> the Wi-Fi is getting a little spotty. I'll wait for you to come back. <laughs> There you go. I hear you now. Okay. Yeah, but I, I like that one too. That I think that was the same model as the woman in the Extend that we looked at earlier. Mm -hmm. And then um, and the then... floral. The florals, I would say about them are, I tried to do some florals that were not your typical still life, you know, flowers in a vase on a table. Um, so I did the really big rose, long stem rose, and um, that piece called Offering right there is um, done on paper. We took ar arches, I took arches paper and then gessoed it and layered it with the um, matte medium, I think, and then we, I, uh, we, I keep saying we, I <laughs> painted it with oil paint and left some of the background showing and tried to, you know, make it different than a typical bouquet. I like the pastel palette in that one. It does, it's got a lot of, um, so Anja had her hand raised and I invited her to speak if she would like sure. to. She might have a question for you. Okay. So, so let's see, Anja, you can hear me. I've invited you to speak, and it sounds like you might have your, your audio on. Well, if I do, I, am, I, I didn't really mean to, but at the same time, now that I have the opportunity, I would love to say I love your work, and Thank I you. have already posted, I love your landscapes. Uh, oh, we you. had your landscapes over at White's last Christmas and the Christmas before, and now we get to see uh, other works of yours, which um, is very often hard to, uh, you know, we don't get an opportunity to see that kind of work. And uh, I'm really, uh, I hope a lot of people will come and see your work um, uh, at the Captain White House. Thank you. I do too. Thank you so much, Anja. I appreciate that very much. Are you, are you there, Rory? Well, while I'm waiting for Rory, let's see. I can talk about the landscapes. Are you there? Yeah, we'd love okay. to hear <laughs> there. Okay. Um, the landscapes, yeah, I, um, as I said, I've, I mostly have done landscapes and I, I just paint from places I go in life. And um, I grew up on the coast of Georgia, but I love, you know, the mountains too and the rural areas. And we have quite a few rural areas still around Cabarrus County. And um, I mean, really, they're just, if you have the right light, any, any place can be beautiful. <laughs> um, but I, I just love, my husband coined a term for me. He said, you're always chasing beauty and it's true. I'm just always snapping pictures with my phone and then going back to paint from them later. So that's kind of where the landscapes come from. I love that you shared that. So mm -hmm. all of your landscapes are spaces that you've actually seen and experienced and been inspired by. Right, right. Yeah, and so that the big one, the 24 by 48, um, where my help comes from, that is um, actually up like around the Blue Ridge Parkway near Blowing Rock. And um, so, yeah, a lot of, most of my mountain scenes are in that area. Between, and that one is, yeah, in a, near a little town or in a little town called Todd, um, mm -hmm. North Carolina, which is, oh, uh, 
probably 30, 45 minutes from Blowing Rock. And we had gone to go tubing one time down the New River. I think it was the New River. Anyway, um, and I just fell in love with the rural landscape, the farms and things on the way there. And so I snapped some photos and later painted that from it. That is super cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's really fun to take a walk down memory lane through your paintings and remember where you were and, you know, when you discovered that place or whatever. Almost art as a form of documentation and memories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Oh, yep. That's another one on board. Um, yep. And that some of these I'll mention to the viewers. Um, some of these, like the ones she's showing now, are on Arches paper, and then I've just displayed them on top of canvas so that I didn't have to put glass over them. So, you know, that just kind of takes away from it. So, yeah, that one was <laughs> exciting. <laughs> yeah. This one's very different than the rest. Um, yeah. Is there, like, maybe it was the art class that was challenging you or a different process you were trying? What do you think? Yeah, probably it was, you know, just playing with a different medium, doing the India ink. Um, and then I used a little bit of gesso and I think that was it. But um, yeah, and, you know, different models kind of inspire you in different ways too. Mm -hmm. um, so that is all of the paintings they look okay this thank you fun. yeah and uh, um i'll just add one more thing the the florals some of them i had done for an exhibit a few years ago which the call was about um a, you had to have we each had a poet that we were painting from their poetry and so mine was carl sandberg and so the titles come from, I think two of those paintings come from his poetry. Wow. So you were inspired by the poetry and that's what you created as a result. That's so cool. Yeah, the, um, the fox gloves, your heart was handed over to the fox gloves. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, now the name is escaping me, <laughs> but the one okay. with the, the um, periwinkle colored flowers. Yeah, let's go see if we can take folks over to that one so they can see what you're talking about. <laughs> it's really beautiful, the colors in that one. Um, Thank you. This one? And I, I, yeah, that one. I enjoy trying to come up with original and intriguing titles. So I don't always succeed, but <laughs> when I do, I like that. Yeah, I love that. Um, so is there anything that you want to impart on the audience before we depart ways? Um, I can't think of anything else. Um, um, not really, just, you know, one of the questions was, where do you find inspiration? And I would just add that I find it just everywhere. As I said, I'm always taking pictures and making notes and um, I journal about ideas, so. I just find it everywhere. I try to have the inspiration, you know, coming from being filtered through me and not through someone else. In other words, like, you know, I don't want to paint from somebody else's photos necessarily or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, unless yeah. I'm doing the commission. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like you have a lot of creative endeavors that help inform your own creative process and practice. I try to, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, sometimes I feel a little stuck, but mostly it's more being overwhelmed with all the things that I want to do and, <laughs> and finding the time to get to all of them, you know, but. Yeah, so it's all like a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I uh, so appreciate this, uh, this time with you, Rory, and I appreciate the show and I hope people will come out and see it. Oh, so Andre here has mentioned um, that this is international because her sister in Germany is watching this as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hello. That's, That's so cool. uh, excellent. Yeah, what I was hoping with virtual receptions is that we could be more inclusive and invite more people that may not be here at a specific time, but even internationally. And Andre has done that by inviting her sister. Thank you so yes. much. Yes. 
<laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you joining us and having your sister join us. This is so cool. And Julia, I want to give you the biggest kudos. Thank you so much for trying out this new thing with me and sure. being so gracious and sharing your artwork, specifically these artworks with us. Thank you so much. Thank um, you, Lori. I want to close out by inviting everyone to see the work in person. It's magical. Come once, come twice, come a million times, please. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, we we just encourage people to come in and take a look and also purchase. Art is available for sale. If you see any of these that you are obsessed with, please do take them home. Um, to fully appreciate the vibrance, the beautiful colors, you have to see them in person. The works will be on display until June 26th, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Julia, for that. And we're open Monday through Saturday, unless there's a holiday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So thank you all for your time. Thank you, Julia, for sharing your process. Thank you. Um, with that, I think we'll release you into the rest of your day. Thank you again. <laughs> Um, great. Thank you, Rory. Thanks, everybody. And Hi. feel free to email me. You can go through my website if you have a, any other questions or comments. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>